1953, the movie The Bandwagon came out, and people really loved it because it had comedy, music, and dancing. It was directed by Vincent Minnelli and starred Fred Astaire and Sid Sherry's. There are some interesting facts about how they made this movie that might surprise you. Have you ever thought about the first time you saw this movie or why it's still popular today? As you learn more about it, you'll find out. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your favorite memory or personal story about this movie? Share it with us in the comment entrance below. Let's keep talking about it. The movie The Bandwagon from 1953 had a big effect on musical films. It's still remembered today for a few reasons. Firstly, it had a great cast and crew with Fred Astaire leading. They did fantastic dance routines and catchy songs. Secondly, the movie's themes like working together and dealing with the challenges of showbiz still connect with people. It shows the struggles of making a successful production, which many can relate to. Lastly, the band Wagon influenced later musicals and stage shows inspiring many performers and film lantrakers. The movie stays popular because it has timeless qualities the songs are catchy, the dances are graceful, and the dialogue is witty. Plus, it explores the creative process and the quest for excellence in entertainment, which keeps viewers interested. Overall, The Bandwagon is a classic in its genre, loved by audiences of all ages. In conclusion, The Bandwagon made a big impact and continues to be relevant today. Its lasting charm entertains and motivates people, securing its place in movie history. The Bandwagon, a 1953 movie, featured a notable actress who got her first speaking part in another film by George Sidney called The Harvey Girls. Interestingly, she also appears on the cover of the Beatles' SGT Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album. Despite being a hit at the box office initially, the bandwagon incurred significant expenses during production, resulting in a loss of one $185,000, according to studio records. In the 1953 movie, there's a talented cast with actors who later made big impacts in the film industry. One person, Leslie Benedict, was considered for a role in a 1956 movie called Giant, but couldn't do it because of filming in Pakistan for Bawani Junction. So, the role went to Elizabeth Taylor. The lead actress in the movie, who's the youngest of seven siblings, later acted alongside her niece, Shelley Fabre, on TV. They were in One Day at a Time in 1975, and also on an episode of The Hollywood Squares that same year. This movie is remembered not just for being entertaining, but also for the connections the cast had in their careers. It shows how relationships in the entertainment industry can last. The Bandwagon, a 1953 movie, features theater marquees and posters showcasing scenes from the Proud Land, notably the Girl Hunt Ballet, a nod to Vincent Minnelli's film The Bad, and The Beautiful from the previous year. Following the success of Blue Skies in 1946, New York's Paramount Theater rallied 10,000 signatures to entice the lead to end his retirement. Although the role of Cosmo Brown in Singin' in the Rain was originally envisioned for him, it was ultimately portrayed by Donald O'Connor. In 2019, a day was dedicated to honoring the film work of the star from the bandwagon during the Turner Classic Movies Summa Limiter Under the Stars. This acknowledgement speaks to the lasting importance of the movie, which finds its place among the 1001 movies you must see before you die, curated by Steven Schneider. One interesting aspect of the show is the collaboration between choreographer Michael Kidd and Fred Astaire. Kid, initially unsure, presented ideas for the girl hunt ballet that went against Astaire's usual elegant persona. Contrary to expectations, Astaire embraced Kid's unconventional concepts, even adding some ideas of his own. This dynamic collaboration showcased the adaptability of a seasoned performer like Astaire, willing to step outside his usual image. The synergy between Kid and Astaire added complexity to the choreography of the movie, challenging the established notions associated with Astaire's on-screen presence. In Summa Lamterary, the bandwagon recognized in classic cinema not only earned its place in the list of must-see movies, but also stands out for defying expectations in its choreographic choices, bringing a fresh perspective to Astaire's repertoire. Ginger Rogers, who dated Fred Astaire briefly in the 1930s after meeting him in New York, was captivated by his dancing in the original Broadway production of this show, particularly with Tilly Losh. She expressed regret for not paying closer attention to his moves given their subsequent partnership. The movie features mostly non-original songs, with the most famous one, that's entertainment, being crafted in response to producer Arthur Freed's concerns about the film lacking something akin to Irving Berlin's There's No Business Like Show Business. 
Arthur Schwartz, and Howard Diets created that's entertainment in just 45 minutes to address this gap. In his autobiography, Fred Astaire recalled meeting Ginger Rogers in New York before they both ventured to Hollywood. At the time, they were both stage performers. Astaire was partnered with his sister Adele, while Rogers was yet to become his screen partner. They shared a dance at a New York nightclub and engaged in discussions about the theater business with Rogers' mother, Lella Rogers. The Bandwagon, released in 1953, features Leroy Daniels, a real shoe shiner from downtown Los Angeles, in the Shine on Your Shoes scene with a stare. Daniels, also a comedian and dancer, partly inspired the song Chattanooga Shoe Shine Boy. He was friends with Red Fox and appeared on Sanford and Son as himself. The movie debuted on NBC's Saturday Night at the Movies in 1964. Some songs like Sweet Music, You Have Everything, and Got a Brand New Suit were cut from the film but can be found on the Rhino soundtrack CD. Sweet Music was sung by Nanette Fabre and Oscar Levant, You Have Everything featured Fred Astaire and Sid Sherry's Dancing and Got a Brand New Suit showcased Astaire and Fabre with Levant on piano. The movie The Bandwagon, released in 1953, is significant in movie history. It was ranked 73rd in Empire Magazine's list of the top 100 movie stars of all time in October 1997. The glass bathtub featured in the Girl Hunt ballet sequence was originally made for the women and used by Joan Crawford. In another interesting detail, Myron Healy filled in for a cast member as Doc Holliday in The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp for several episodes in 1958 and 1959. This substitution happened because of filming delays caused by Healy's work on a gift for Heidi in West Germany. His Kamalam treatment to the German project extended beyond the planned time, leading to his temporary absence from the TV show. These connections highlight the lasting influence of the bandwagon. The movie from 1953, The Bandwagon, has some interesting trivia about its cast and inspiration. The lead role of Joe Stockton in Funny Face was offered to an actor from the bandwagon, but was declined, eventually taken up by Audrey Hepburn. This actor also made notable appearances on the Hollywood Squares, greeting viewers in sign language each time. According to Vincent Minnelli, the director, the character Jeffrey Cordova was based on flamboyant personalities like Orson Welles and George S. Kaufman. Additionally, the narration style for the Girl Hunt number was inspired by Mickey Spillane's works. These insights offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics and creative influences of the movie. Starring in two movies recognized by the Library of Congress for their cultural, historical, and aesthetic significance, the actress made a lasting impression on cinematic history. Singing in the Rain and the Bandwagon showcase her wide range of talents. In the Bandwagon, there's a memorable sight gag during the musical number Triplets. The clever trick makes the performers Astaire, Fabre, and Buchanan appear identical in height by using prosthetic baby feet of varying lengths. Considered one of the top 100 greatest American movies by the American Film Institute in 1998, the bandwagon secured its place in cinematic history. Its enduring charm and innovative visual techniques have earned it a spot on this prestigious list. The actress's contribution to two National Film Registry selections and her involvement in a movie recognized by the American Film Institute highlight her influence on the industry. The bandwagon stands as a testament to her cinematic skills and is still celebrated today.